Okay, team, second time lucky. Um, I am back today with Dane from Survive to Thrive Nation. So we're going to be talking all things personal development, mental health, um, helping ex-military personnel who are suffering from PTSD. Um, we're going to be talking about lots of things. As usual, the materials and content are recommended as general information only um, and they're not um, to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. So just make sure that you aren't a pelican and um, I will get Dane on and he can tell you all about himself and his business and no doubt an interesting chat. Could be long because, got to be honest with you, the guy can talk, can talk. Um, so anyway, I'll bring Dane on and we will get cracking for the day and hopefully you guys can learn a little bit more about things that you perhaps didn't know about. Let's see how we're going. <sighs> Always good times and here he comes. Hey buddy. How's that? Oi, ease up. Can talk. Can talk. No, can <laughs> Oh, you're right. You're right. Can, I've been known. I've been known to talk. Can talk. Sorry. <laughs> been known to talk a glass eye to sleep. That's absolutely, sure. absolutely, and that's never a bad thing. Never a bad thing. <laughs> hey, um, before I I'm get you, I'm not on you... a podcast. What's going on? Good to see you, buddy. You too. You too. Um, before we get started, and I'll get everyone to tell you to tell everyone. Seriously, been talking long. Get you to tell everybody. Um, a little bit about yourself and your business and how it kind of came to be. But what I would like to know is what I've been asking people lately is what are you digging at the moment? So that could be anything from like fitness, food, um, mental health, meditation. So what I'm digging right now is medicinal mushrooms and not like magic mushrooms. I'm not talking about, you know, getting off your face. Medicinal mushrooms, like things like reishi, chaga, lion's mane, putting that in my coffee, I'm really digging that lately. So there's lots of health benefits to medicinal mushrooms, um, like mental clarity and helping you be calmer. I actually find that by putting that in my coffee, I get less jittery. So sometimes when I drink coffee, I feel really jittery and shaky. M mushrooms in my coffee seem to zen me out. Right, and I forgot, it's my third religion. The only religion with evidence, <laughs> by the way, people. Um, so, uh, uh, so we have to talk a little food. Yeah, today, so what, what do you do? Uh, but I want to know um, what you're. What is there? Is there, stop. Is, is there anything at the moment that stands yeah, out you, to me at the moment? In no, the it doesn't foods, have to. In the food, it doesn't that have I'm to be eating. food, just anything you're digging lately. So, exercise, food. Right, yeah, Brazilian jiu jitsu. Okay. That's cool. Is that it? Yeah, started Brazilian yeah. Jiu-Jitsu. And I'll tell you why. Um, a lot of veterans are getting into it with PTSD and anxiety because uh, when you've got someone on top of you who's basically mauling you, um, if you exude energy, you have to learn how to um, be on top of your uh, aggression because if you exude energy, that's what they want to do. They want to tire you out. So you learn to become comfortable in the uncomfortable. Um, and you only exacerbate certain energy at the right time so therefore you learn to control your emotions under heavy stress so coming outside that environment you apply those transferable skills into your everyday life so that's super interesting do you do you not find that that's an excessively stressful situation for some people to be in where they just can't cope um put it this way if you become debilitated with anxiety or ptsd getting out of the house is hard mm. Um, but having someone stay in the house and um, furthering that condition uh, lacks the ability to give them the resilience that they need to move forward. Um, I wouldn't put someone straight into that environment to yeah. start with. Obviously, it's a step-by-step -step mm. process. Um, uh, but the bottom line is, is it's a great goal to start to achieve because at the end of the day, um, I've seen people who are debilitated and then when they come out with the endorphin release, they've got the confidence, they've got the peer support, um, they've got the, the, uh, the ability to achieve again. Um, at the end of the day, good mental health is really simple. It's a sense of well-being, confidence and yeah. self-esteem. Um, and that is completely lost when you have to second guess yourself when you've got anxiety, you're going against your instincts because uh, your feelings are irrational. Um, things such as depression obviously knock you around with your, your confidence. So to put someone back into those environments 
obviously starts to build that confidence. You know, you've got to remember, um, we get confidence through our motivation and the things that we actually yeah. do. You know, having knowledge is one thing, but it's through the actual practices uh, is that, that that's where we get our confidence to succeed. So, so these... Yeah, and I think BJ. So those Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu classes, are they being run specifically for um, soldiers and military or are they actually just something that, you know, anyone's going along to with any other, you know, no. random person? Right. Yeah, look, um, no. They, the, the thing is, and the thing that I like about it too, is um, when you are in a space in the military and you're taken away from friends and family and you're put in that environment all of the time, we have major problems with people transitioning out and not having people understand them. Uh, and the truth is, is that we just, you know, we become institutionalised into our own uh, environment. Um, I would. I used to think that that would be a good idea just to have soldiers around doing that, but I like the um, transitioning side of um, us getting out there with civilians and, um, you know, and bringing that respect. But, look, I'm a civilian. I've been out for over 10 yeah. years, so I'm as civvy as it comes now. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> so on that note, let's go back to the start. And can you just give everybody a bit of a rundown on who you are, what you do, and how that even became to be? Well, yeah, cool. Um Dane Christensen, founding CEO of Survive to Thrive Nation. Uh, we provide the world's first online evidence-based uh, personal development program for mental health and transitioning. We also provide 24-hour access to peer support. So uh, if a veteran is suffering um, and they can't wait to get in to see a, a doctor for a few weeks or they don't even want to call a doctor or an ambulance in a situation, they can reach out to another veteran who's been through the program. They've overcome their own adversities. They understand what they're going through and they can be coached and mentored and, and helped through what they're going through. Um, so uh, we've just landed the first federal government contract. It's taken us seven years to get there. We, uh, I obviously created that program and I'll, I'll talk more about how that came about. Um, but we're now evidence-based. Um, we went through Gallipoli Medical Research Foundation, did a clinical trial that went for about mm -hmm. 18 months. Um, we're actually getting, our, our results are getting published uh, in the next week. Um, and then we did a full federal government review. So after, you know, years of pitching, um, being the wolf at the door, um, strategizing with politicians and really pushing what we do, um, you know, we're finally um, out there and we're bridging a huge gap in the veteran community. Um, the way that I look at personal development, it's like this, right? You go see a doctor, you get your fish to eat for the day. Um, but at some point, you're going to learn to, to fish, to, you know, fish yourself, to, to eat for yourself. So um, the way that I look at it is, is one is there to help you survive and your personal development, the role and responsibility you have in your own recovery, your own growth, your own goal setting, your own achievements and success. Um, is where you're going yeah. to thrive, is where you're going to get resilience, is where you're going to take the, the, um, the, the, uh, the training wheels off and, and just, you know, start moving forward in your own life. So, um, yeah, that's essentially what we do. Um, there's a lot involved in that program, but um, bottom line, that's, that's what so we're So back then, uh, in the beginning of that, you said that if there's soldiers that are feeling like they need help and, you know, they don't want to call a doctor or something like that, so firstly, what, what is it that they need help with? Are they having anxiety? Are they having a panic attack? And then second part to that question is the people that they're calling, you said are people who've previously been through the program, do they, like is any random who's just been through the program cool to be, you know, a big brother or do they need to go through some sort of training and accreditation to be qualified to be the right person to have that discussion with somebody who's in crisis? Yeah. Well, our face-to-face -face peer mentors, mm -hmm. um, uh, Open Arms is the contract that we're involved with with, um, with the government. Uh, they go through a proper training thing with, with counsellors. Mm -hmm. So they, they get their own peer qualifications uh, through that network. Um, our guys within the 24-hour support page are simply mates helping mates. Right. And I think that that's really important because if you put too much emphasis on the clinical side, you might as well just be using counsellors. Yeah. So it's mates helping mates in its rawest form. And having that style of communication is still really important because it's lived experience and, and it's, it's, you know, you don't want to be changing the, um, the dialogue of, of what we do. Well, it's probably um, a bit of that. So, so yeah. We, it's probably a bit of that community and camaraderie that they're used to as well, you know, in that military situation correct. you've got those correct yeah correct correct you know i i want someone to be able to talk to me in the language that i know yeah 
you know, and that's and that's what we do. And look, we're not, don't ever think that we are a substitute for clinical professionals. We're never a substitute for clinical professionals. Someone comes to us, we ask, have they had their diagnosis and treatment? That's yeah. what we do. So we ensure that they get the, the professional help that they need. We never substitute that. Um, but we've got our own gap that needs to be bridged and that's the, the mates help and mates side yep. of it. So, so yeah. who's who's coming to be part of this this program? Is it so it's it's all military or ex military? Yeah. Yeah. Look, we're going into emergency services obviously, but yeah, look it's um uh it, it's current and former mm-hmm. service families, um service service personnel. Um the way that it you know they they come in is number one is I want to prevent problems before they need a cure. Why do we wait till DEFCON one before we educate someone on how to deal with certain things? Um, and the way that I sort of look at that is um, you know education in itself. Like put it this way, um, you're going for a drive and uh, you don't really know where you're going. What's going to happen? You're going to exacerbate stress. But if you know what to do, you know your actions on, you know how to get yourself out of that situation, it increases confidence, good mental health. So if you educate someone on what to do, what the signs are, and how to get themselves out of that situation really, really quickly, their confidence Mm -hmm. is going to grow. But if you don't, they're going to go into exacerbated stress and have an absolute breakdown and not know what to do or where to go or where to turn, um, and it's going to Mm -hmm. fluctuate. So our goal, my major goal, is that I believe that you know, we're trained to go to war and my, my program trains them to come home. I, I'm trying to aim to have a compulsory program. So before you leave the ADF, you must do the program. Uh, and you've also got support network there 24-7 if you need it. So if you ever fall off the horse, there, there they are. I think we're going to save a lot yeah. of lives just doing that and just having that there. Because um, yeah. you're, in you're already involved in it. You know? So, currently, yeah. the people, so currently the people who are actually coming in to be part of your program are people who have diagnosed PTSD, depression, anxiety. Right, right, right. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, was, I was going over three. So one is transitioning soldiers who don't have it. We, we want, what we want is guys to do personal yeah. development um, to prevent the problems before they need a cure. The second is whether you're current or former service personnel and you're dealing with uh, mm-hmm. anxiety uh, or depression or PTSD or you're just going through high stress uh, or you're confused, whatever it may be. Um, there we help that. And then the second is, is called adaptation stress. So when you transition from military to civilian life, um, because you're in an institutionalized environment, that in itself is um, something that, that creates an, uh, an entire realm of, of anxiety on its own. Um, and look, put it this way, if you don't have a purpose in life after you've had a purpose within the military, um, that in itself creates a major amount of depression because you're losing a lot of value within yourself. So therefore, confidence yeah. goes down. So, so this is clearly yeah. something that you yeah. are incredibly passionate about. And I think for a lot of, um, yeah, of people, these amazing businesses um, come from a personal experience. So is... I was waiting for <laughs> so it. So is there... It, it, did this come from personal experience for you or was it somebody around you that yeah, you saw? Yeah, of course it, yeah. Of course it did, yeah. Of course it did. Yeah, I came. I um, uh, I served in East Timor in Iraq, uh, and then I went over to London, and uh, and I was in a counterterrorism project during the London bombings. In fact, uh, quite a funny story. I um, I just got out of the military, and we did this thing called hurry up and wait. We always said um, to be early is to be on time, to be on time is to be late, and to be late is unacceptable. So we were always early for everything. But they used to have this thing called hurry up and wait because you'd have to be there on time. Otherwise, there was huge consequences. But when you got there, there was nothing to do. So you'd just be sitting there going, uh, what? Back in now. Yeah. So, um, so, so this day, I was told to get onto a tube in, in London and, uh, and I decided to get the tube before the one that they told me to get. And I went through King's Cross Station and I got up at St. Paul's. The one after mine um, stopped at, at, um, at uh, um, King's Cross. It, it blew up. I think it was... 57 killed, 180 something in the biggest in Lon- attack in London, in London, and I just got day. back. Where are you? Where are you? That was hectic Mate, that day, wasn't it? home with the other bazillion people. Oh, we walked from, yeah, I know. intense. I know. I had to get on a, a boat. I forget where I, I went. I had to get on like a, like a ferry, and it was just yeah. packed, like sardines. The Vanga, it looked like a Vanga bus over in Timor <laughs> where there was thousands of people just hanging off the side of this thing. It's crazy. Um, but I just, yeah, I just got back from Iraq and over there we were in heavy combat. So we were getting shot at, blown up, 
all of those kind of things that um, you go through in those those good places. Um, and I, yeah, I just started to experience really severe anxiety, and uh, essentially that started to creep into my. And was it life. triggered by um, triggered by anything I, in particular? Well, it, it actually had was it actually had come on um, through the intenseness of Iraq, and remember, I was only six weeks out when I went to London, so I was experiencing it. But I was partying, so I was self medicating during the partying times, and I think um, you know, in the short term, um, alcohol, women, whatever the hell was going on in my life was keeping that stimulation mm-hmm. going. Um, so it was when the stimulation stopped that the mind started to what play. What goes up tricks. must come down. A hundred percent. And fucking hell, do you come mm. down? Oh, Humpty Dumpty. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, it started to creep into my everyday life. And, and the thing was, is that the threats of, um, you know, serious threats were now threats in my everyday life. Is that person thinking something about me? You know, the social anxiety would start to creep in. Um, you would react to it with anger uh, and then you would self-medicate again and, and you're in this vicious cycle. And it went on for about four years uh, before I got any help. Um, so I was a social hand grenade just fucking ruining everybody's life uh, and blaming them, of course, because there was no personal responsibility that was yeah. taken for it. Um, and, uh, and when I went to go get help through the clinical professionals, I wasn't getting the answers that I wanted. And I also seen a huge dependency. I was like, brah, you were in Vietnam 40 years ago and you're still an inpatient in this hospital mm. every year. Fuck that. If that's going to yeah. be me, I've got to make a change. And long story short, um, I was sick of just surviving on medication and going in and seeing my doctor every month. And so and, did they, did um, they medicate during, you? Was that the answer at that point? Yeah. Yeah. They bombed us on medication and I was just yeah. numb and yeah. And I couldn't function and think properly and I just felt gross and dirty all the time with it. Um, so I just got off them and I got, I, I haven't been on those things for, you know, I only was on them for about I don't know, three months yeah. or something like that. And I was like, fuck this. I, you know, I've got to take that off. Um, some people are on them forever, like literally yeah. forever. And I, I just didn't want to be dependent on anything. I didn't want to be dependent on the doctors. So personal development, I started to, you know, realize I've got to build that resilience back. And, and that's where I went in there and found, you know, my own role and responsibility in my own recovery. And, and was there a and, tipping point? And I wanted to coach that was to the community. Like, was there an incident that happened uh, or something? The, <laughs> uh, yeah, there was. Fuck, you know all this, eh? <laughs> um, yeah, I, my ex, my ex wife actually. Um, I the the medication wasn't working. The doc, the doctors just weren't getting me to the place that I wanted, and um, I uh, was renovating my house, which is fucking stress on its own. I tell you what, if you want to go through relationship boot camp, renovate a house with your chick or your dude. <laughs> See how you go. Come out the other end of that bad boy. <laughs> Tell you what. So we were we were uh, we were at um, Bunnings, and I'd seen a rope. And someone once had said to me that before I tried to take my life, it was the most beautiful, relaxed feeling I've ever felt in my life because I just the problems were over now, and I knew it was everything was going to be okay. And I seen a rope, and I um, felt this the most relaxed I've ever felt. I just. And then it just I just flipped. got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And cognitively, I it clicked and I got scared. Like the, the fear came in. Oh, fuck. I, like I was, I'm really, I'm really considering this. Um, so I ran out to the, I dropped these paint tins that were in my hand and I ran out to the car and my ex-wife had never seen me cry. So, and I hadn't cried in about 15 years or something at that stage since my sister passed away. So I got into the car and bang, the fucking waterworks came out. They went for about four hours. Mm. But anyways, she goes, just tell me what's up. Tell me what's up. And I said, um, I, I think I'm, I think I can't do this. I think, I don't think I'm going to make it. And she fucking leapt and grabbed me like this and said, you better figure out what fuck you can do for yourself. That medication doesn't work. And those fucking doctors aren't getting you to where you go. You got to figure out what you can do to overcome this and fucking survive because you will be another Mm. victim. And I was like, fucking what? And it just woke me up and I got home. I started putting in inspiration into Google and watching every motivational clip I could. And 
I started to connect with people and their real life experience and it, um, immediately it broke stigma and it gave me hope and it gave me something to visualize and look into and I just started to learn the answers and when I went out there on my own in my own personal development I started to find answers that weren't coached in in um the the clinical side of things and I thought this is so fucking important and and I need to go out there and coach it to my community started with I asked three mates my first seminar and they brought a mate each and I had six in my lounge room uh, you know, and here we are today, a massive national company, federally funded, um, and we pay yeah. the house. So, um, Absolutely. Yeah. So if someone is suffering from, you know, PTSD, anxiety, depression, you know, ex-military or not, is there, you know, a couple of things that you can pinpoint that really helped you then but still help you now? Because I, 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 I would assume that something like PTSD isn't something that you just cure and you never suffer from anxiety or depression or that sort of stuff again. Right. So is there anything that you... I, I, don't, I don't want to confuse, confuse mm. people. I want to make it really short and sweet. Number one is fucking tell somebody that yeah. you trust. We've all got somebody in our lives that is going to listen without judgment. First point of call, tell someone about it. Okay? Liberate yourself. Get the pain off your chest. Talk about something, even if it's disgusting or fuck that you have been carrying or whatever it is, tell somebody. Tell them about how you can't function and how you can't cope. And I'm saying someone you trust because too often people tell the wrong fucking mm. people and they go, hard up, get over it, do all of that. Don't. Find someone that you mm. can trust to talk to. It's the first yeah. point of call. Be reasonable about it. Second... Go, go and see the right clinical professional. Yeah. That's the second thing you do. Man, you're going to go to the doctor for a sniffle to get out of bloody yeah. work. You know, why are we not going? If we, if we break our arm, we're straight down to the hospital getting it fixed. Our mind is literally doing, it is functioning for everything. Absolutely. Why do we not look after it? Go and see your clinical professional. Get your diagnosis and get yeah. your treatment. And third, do your personal development. Really build your resilience. Get yourself into the best place that mm -hmm. you can be, your optimum strength spiritually. And what I mean by that is create a purpose in your life that is bigger than your psychological and emotional level because when you're in pain, give yourself something yeah. to live for. That's the second. Second is understand the actions on the certain thought patterns that happen in your mind that are creating yeah. the stress. Right. Third is make sure you're looking after the tomb that is mm. carrying you, your physical yeah. side. Uh, and that is what, what you guys teach every day. Fitness and nutrition is fucking everything, you know, to keep those endorphins going, creating the serotonin so you can work on the mind, all of those yeah. kind of things. Um, the next is creating a network of success. I'll tell you this, with my company, with my recovery, it's everyone that's around me. I'll tell you this right now. If it, You show me your friends and I'll show you your future, without a doubt. Um then I would say your community. What are you doing in your life? What, what, where, what value are you giving? Make sure that you're giving value because you'll get it in return for your confidence. And lastly, people don't talk about this enough. People say money don't make you happy. happy. Have you ever been fucking broke? All right, seriously, make sure that you get your, 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 your financial side because it's going to exacerbate stress. And that's the six key areas of happiness or the six key areas of misery if you're not yeah. looking after them. So... That's that's what I say to to everyone, and that's how we we break things down. Yeah, <laughs> I think um that final point's a really good one because I think you're right. Money money doesn't make you happy, but it also money is probably one of the key drivers of stress for most people in their life. And hundred percent, you know, wealth or you know, and wealth in any aspect of your life, whether that's in your relationship, whether that's financially, um, whether that's physically. It's not, it's not a dirty word to be wealthy in your life. No. Um, it doesn't mean that you have miscellaneous no. shit you don't need or that you drop, you know, money on shit you don't Correct. need. But it is. It's one of those key drivers of stress for people, I think, and it's super important to realise that having control of no. your financial situation, it doesn't mean that you need to have a million bucks in the bank. You just need to understand what's going on with your finances and where they're going and make sure that you're not dropping money on shit that you can't afford. 
Exactly. Look, uh, your money should be in, into investing mm. in yourself, you know, honestly. And what is success at the end of the day? If you had a million dollars and you had a miserable relationship, would you be mm. successful? No. So success at the end of the day is just happiness. Yeah. So you've got to get yourself, financial freedom is putting yourself in a situation where you can comfortably fund your life in a way that makes you feel mm. free. Um, and if a problem occurs, you have the finances to deal with that uh, kind of yeah. tragedy. So, you know, that's, that, that's, that's all it's So about. if people um, were interested in your program or wanted to come into the program, does that cost them something? Mm. Is that something that the government funds? Is that something the government chips in nah, for? Look, yeah, yeah. So this, this government contract gives, uh, gets us to put on 300 um, current and former service personnel, um, whether they're transitioning out of the military, dealing with mental health adversities or adaptation stress. Um, we also run events uh, for people that aren't within those stipulations um, to, to get onto the program as well. So what we do is um, we, um, we, we literally rack up sponsorships. So when you call us up, we've got those sponsorships there waiting for you. So we do that through events. Um, we did. We had people that didn't want to go through any of that process and just say, "Put me on a payment plan system," because it's a, it, it's the same price as a coffee a day to yeah. get on the program, uh, and it's a, and, and you only pay for it for a year and then you have got it for the rest of your life. So, um, you know, how much money do we spend on shit like coffee, anyways? Yeah. So, um, it's not a not a big deal. But look, um, yeah, anyone that that comes to us now, we're in a situation where we can help. We've also got partnerships with RSL and um, Defence Care and. Um, you know, mates for mates and all those cool organisations that are out there doing wonderful things for our community as well. So we're all collaborating and we're all helping people get to where awesome. they need well, to be. Well, I'm going to let you go in a minute, but what I would like to ask you finally is you touched on um, nutrition and fitness or movement. What, what does that look like in your life now? Um, so every day... I'll just tell you what our routine is and everyone on our program, we've got a phone app that comes with the online program itself. So there's also a phone app. The phone app, every day you wake up, you write down three things that you're grateful for. We all know what gratefulness, gratefulness exercises do for us. It makes us stop thinking about the future, stop thinking about the past, anxiety in the future, depression in the past. What's going on in the background over really there? Really inconsiderate builders, actually. Really? Yeah. What are really? Them? They really are. Uh, I know, I know. So, uh, so we think about what we're grateful for, and, it, and, it, and it's all connected to mm -hmm. happiness. Um, I know. Like, damn, those builders are really, they're really messing Absolutely. with our vibe. The second, the inside. second thing we do as we get out of yep. bed, yep. Um, in our program, we have an inspirational Ooh. speaker that comes up from yep. YouTube, right? So, inspiration fuels mm -hmm. motivation. Don't worry about Shen, guys. Eyes on <laughs> moi. Hello. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, so then, uh, um, uh, so then we watch inspiration that fuels motivation. So we get up and now we're in visualization and then we exercise and then we come out and we got a thing on our program called food for mm -hmm. the brain. So it's, it's all foods that build serotonin because as you know, serotonin is made yeah. in the gut. Um, and then we do mm -hmm. meditation and then we start our day. We start our day in good advice. And so is that meditation something that is already part of the program? So all they need to do is push a button and it will guide them through a meditation or is it a sit your ass down yeah. and meditate yourself? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of our, all of our staff on the, on the actual phone app, um, it'll come through um, like YouTube. So it'll be a meditation thing off YouTube. So it's, yeah, it's brilliant. I love cool. it. Um, yeah, but meditation is, uh, I tell you what, if um, once you learn how to meditate correctly, become the witness of your thoughts instead of the participant to be able to get yourself in that zen, I'll tell you what, it's a lifesaver in itself. Yeah, so. awesome. Well, where can people find you? Cool. If they know somebody who could benefit from being part of this program or would like to be part of it themselves, yeah. how do they do that? Just go to survivetothrivenation.com. Okay. I will link through to that once I get this downloaded onto YouTube. Yeah. Um, so I'll link your website yeah. through there. And if, if you guys, cool, if you want to follow us on uh, Instagram, it's Survive to Thrive Nation. Facebook, it's Survive to Thrive Nation dash Dane Christensen. Um, and yeah, that's awesome. it. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. 
Cool. I'll talk to you no soon. Worries. Bye. Bye.